better health has been a laggard because we haven't invested in it. We, you know, we, we built a we built a sick care system, which is magnificent. I mean, it's 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 like cathedrals, but we didn't really do what we need to do as much as we need to do it to build healthy communities, communities that thrive, places where you're safe, where 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 nutrition and activity are fostered, where where equity is valued, and all the things we have to learn to work upstream. And cost, we're really we're in trouble, bad trouble. Healthcare is driving economic disarray in this country and in others. Yeah. Uh, we just we built a lot of non-value-added activity into healthcare, which if we could find a way to extract it, um, we could use that money for so many other important things to do. Meaningful use, kind of referring to the the uh, the, the inevitable now adoption of uh, electronic health records and a modernized information environment for in which patients get cared for, which we learn. It'll be a big, big asset, and I it, and we seem to be underway. I mean, you know, there's there's some pretty good acceleration now of uptake of the kind of data systems that will eventually help us. Right. It, but it seems to me that there's a big gulf between the adoption of electronic medical records and the extraction of new knowledge yes. out of those aggregated records of what's actually working in healthcare and for which populations is it working right. for. How do we start to bridge that gap in your mind? Because I think some of the problems sound like they're low-hanging fruit in terms of just keeping track of a given patient in a system, and other problems are are much more difficult when we talk about learning from data. It's all of the above. I mean, you know this better than I do, so I'm kind of teaching the teacher here, but uh, at the patient level, let's not ignore that, we could do a lot better. You know, we if, if we have systems that help me as the physician remember the patient's name, know the know the trajectory the patient's on, coordinate with other caregivers so that we're, t we're, we're helping the patient through a journey, everything gets better. The health of the patient will improve, costs will fall, because we're not going to be dropping balls and repeating each other's mistakes. Uh, things will be better. When you take the, the data that aggregate with proper care, and, and if you're able to mine that, that, those data so you can study variability and trajectories, I mean, you can, you can ask and answer questions that never would have been possible before. There are many different philosophies about how to cause improvements. Uh, mine is probably the I call learning philosophy, the learning organization, the learning person. And so, so learning could be one, one approach. Another would be a market approach, which is, you know, you create competition and then, and then, and that everybody is on better on their game. Another would be an accountability approach, which is, you know, you set objectives and hold people, hold people, hold people's feet to the fire. No matter what you think, which of those schools you're in, you want information. Transparency helps in all of those theories. In learning, it's essential. You cannot improve your golf game if you don't know where the golf ball goes. You, you're not going to make your you're not going to no, make your uh, souffle better if you don't taste it. You know you have to you have to measure. You, you don't necessarily have to get a number, but you have to assess in order to get better in the learning mode. In a in a in a market mode, of course, then. A market doesn't exist without information. And in accountability mode, same thing. How can I know whether to praise you or not if I don't right. know how you did? So at, we're all, we, at, we all share in common that need. That's what I call turning the lights on. And uh, it's, it's essential and vastly underdeveloped in healthcare historically because, well, because we're fragmented. We don't have the picture across the mm -hmm. time and space. Partly because of professionalism, the way it kind of developed, it was like, "Don't worry about it. We've got this. You don't. You don't need to know how I do. I'm a professional. I'll make sure you're okay." And that kind of public uh, or compact is 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 not quite as robust, perhaps today, as it as I believe it ought to be. Um, so we didn't build for transparency. Now we 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 really we really need it. And uh, the one cautionary note is not everything important can be measured. And not everything that's measured can be quanti quantified. Measurement includes a good question and feedback that's narrative. And so mm -hmm. we, I think I'm, I'm f for a broad view of, of, of transparency. It's not just show me the, the numerical scorecard, but nothing, nothing beats information, you know. I think healthcare is a human right, unequivocally so, like, like, you know, equivalent to other rights, to food and shelter, and I hope education. Uh, 
And I, I, I rebel at the idea that we would call ourselves a civilized society and have people next door to us who can't get care when they need it or health when they want it. And I, I don't go, I, I don't accept that. I don't think it's necessary. I know it's unnecessary and it's wrong.